Hold on one second, I gotta make it. They can see me. And guys, today ain't the new chickens are uh, here. Yeah, they arrived and we're going to pick in some hot uh, oh. So let's get started. Let's slide over. This episode of Home Study was brought to you by Grow Journey the organic seed subscription service. Get organic seeds delivered to your door every month. And by Power Plucker. Core Nutrition at mycorenutrition.net. nwsupply.net. And by the Homesteady Pioneers who are watching the extended version of this video commercial free. Hey everybody, it's an exciting week because I our chicks are here. here. We're headed to the post office. When you order from a big hatchery, they ship them to your local post office. So we have 70 chicks at the local post office. So we're gonna hop in the car and head on down to pick them up. Let's get cracking. Whew, it's chilly out. So we're off to the post office. So we're headed off to the post office. When you order chicks from a hatchery, they ship them to your local post office. They don't send them out in the trucks to your house. Uh, that would be a little bit crazy. So you gotta head on down to your post office. They usually call you bright and early in the morning and tell you, hey, we have chicks here for you. Please come on down and pick them up. So we're headed down. We have 70 chicks. We ordered 50 meat birds and we ordered 20 plus egg layers. Uh, 10 of those are going to be my son's egg layers. This year he's doing his own eggs. We thought it was a really good way to teach a little bit about money and business and how to treat customers and all those sort of things. So one of the most important things when you are preparing for your chicks, you want to make sure that you already have their their lights set up. You want them to be nice and toasty warm when you're bringing them into their new coop because they've lost a lot of heat in the delivery process as you go from you know the hatchery into the trucks to your local post office. Uh, they're going to be cold and you don't want your chicks to be cold. So if you get them and you bring them to a coop and then you turn on your heat lights, everything, the ambient temperature is going to be cold everywhere and that's not good for them. Another thing you want to make sure that you have, you want to have your water prepared. You want to have a nice sugar water there for them so they can get some calories in, them, in their gut real quick. And then have the feed there. You're going to want to use a crumble feed for chicks. You don't want to use the pellets. Pellets are too big. We're going to show you when we get all the chicks. We'll show you our setup. We'll show you our lights. And uh, there's something that I do to all the waterers and all the feeders that makes life a lot easier as the chickens grow. So we're going to show you everything in just a few minutes. We just got to get to the post office and get these chickies. So stay tuned. I'm coming onto the main road here, so I'm going to shut off my camera so I'm not driving distracted. Don't want to have a selfie as I collide into an oncoming truck. Jumping out of the seat. Look here, buddy. Tell the camera what you're doing. We're at the post office and now I'm gonna get my chips. Hey, look at that. We're headed into the post office. Speaking of post office, did you know that if you click that banner ad right there, it'll take you over to Grow Journey where you can sign up for a free month of their seed subscription service. Get organic seeds delivered to your mailbox for free. Go ahead, click the banner, get your seeds, and start growing. So we got all our chicks. Now we're gonna rush them home into the warm coop and they will settle in. Gotta start the car first. Now they're 
snug in the car seat back there. <laughs> How a parent transports chicks. So we get them home, we'll get them in that nice warm coop. They'll be snug as a bug. They can settle in and start growing. All right, we're back to the farm. We're driving back right now to go unload the baby chicks. We're gonna show you our setup in the barn and then we're gonna unload everybody. We're in the coop. We have our water. We're gonna set up a bell waterer. I don't like these bell waterers, they're the worst, but when the chicks first come home from the uh, from their big long three day journey, we wanna make sure they get a real good drink really easily. So we're gonna set up a bell waterer, but we're gonna place it right near this hanging nipple waterer, and uh, we're gonna teach them on the nipple waterer how to drink. And over time, we'll transition them just to the nipple. But for now, we're gonna get them some sugar water in this bell. So you go ahead and fill that, buddy. We have everything hanging up in this coop. Why are You'll we hanging our water buckets from ratchet straps? What special knots do we use to tie our feed? Become a Homesteady Pioneer, and you can watch the extended version of this video, where we share a lot of extra tips with you which makes raising chicks a whole lot easier. Homesteady Pioneers get the extended version of our videos commercial free and all our members only podcasts. Head on over to thisishomesteady.com and become a pioneer or just click on the banner. Get them out, and we're gonna get them a drink. Okay? Just take them one at a time. Show them where the water is. So, how do I know which ones are mine? Easy. My dad told so you can see the difference in the two chicks here. Not You can't tell much of a difference right now. They're both about the same size. This is a Cornish chick. This is a meat variety. And these little chicks are going to grow twice as fast as these heritage breeds. This here is either an Aracana. Uh, I think we got some buffs. I don't remember exactly. I'll have to look at the paperwork. Uh, but that's a heritage breed chick right there. There's a lot of color in those chicks. And... Uh, that's a Cornish. They're about the same size, but as you watch those chicks grow, you'll notice the, the little fluffy uh, white ones there grow twice as fast as the darker ones. Now there are certain egg laying breeds that would look the same as those uh, Cornish right now, but over time you'll notice the different rate, rate of growth. So everybody's running around right now. Uh, they're all getting out. They're all excited to find their new area here. But they're going to slow down, and in just a little while, you'll notice they'll all congregate underneath the heat lamps and you know, kind of take a rest. You want to pay attention to how the chicks congregate underneath those heat lamps because that's going to tell you a lot about whether or not they're too cold or too warm. I'm not a big fan of putting a thermometer in one spot and judging it by the thermometer because a thermometer is not a living thing, and if something goes wrong, the thermometer isn't going to die. I instead prefer to just take a look at the chicks, uh, let them kind of settle down a little bit, and you'll notice if they're all really tightly packed underneath the heat lamps, that means they're cold. If they're all kind of spread out, far away from the center of the heat lamps, that means they're too hot. And if they're all just evenly mixed underneath that heat lamp, you got it just about right. Remember, if you have a big enough area, they'll be able to move around to the perimeter or to the center. What you really want to avoid is finding a big cluster all in the center. That means they're fighting for that heat, and you don't want them fighting for heat. You want them to all have a chance at, at good warmth. So I can see right now, everybody's looking. Uh, they're all, you know, they're cruising around, but I, I feel like they're going to be clustered up. So I'm going to lower down a couple of my lights so everybody can get a little bit warmer. Tennessee. 